In my last video, we took my stick shift Mach 1 with the Hellion twin turbo package and my wife's stick shift ZL1 out roll racing. And all in all, it was extremely successful with one minor hiccup. If you haven't seen the video, here's some quick clips, but definitely go back and watch it. All in all, as I said, extremely successful. Both cars came back in one piece. Um, no parts fell off, no overheating, no weird oil consumption, anything like that. So very successful. However, when I went back and I really reviewed the footage, and, and I did start to notice this while I was on the track too, it seemed as if the Mach 1 wasn't making predictable boost. And what I'll say by that, by saying predictable is, it seemed to be lower boost in the low gears and higher sometimes in the high gears. So check out some of these clips and pay very close attention to what gear I'm in. In some races I started in the third gear, in others I started in second. I think the second gear examples are really good because um, you can see the boost it makes in second, third, and fourth gear. Um, something to point out when we did all the dyno tuning with this vehicle, it's a Mach 1. Fifth gear is one-to-one. -one. So I know most cars like the Camaro, Corvettes, fourth gear is your one-to-one -one gear. Um, but however, in the Mach 1 with the closer ratios, fifth is one-to-one. -one. Also, the Mach 1, because it's a manual, has a 373 rear end. So check out these clips. Focus on the boost gauge, okay? And we'll come back and we'll talk about what the issues are. Important things to point out, we have the Go Fast Bits Boost Controller. This does not support boost by gear. It does have some other cool functions. I'm using it very basically. I don't have scramble set up. I don't have it tied to a wideband or anything like that. Very, very basic. Um, now, these wastegate springs in this car should yield about seven to seven and a half pounds on a base setting, so the, where the boost controller is not trying to add any boost. Um, setting two, which is the second setting, should be around 10 PSI, and that is controlled by the duty cycle on the controller. And then finally, setting three should be around 12 pounds of boost, um, and our, our over boost, our safety feature, so if you make too much boost, that kicks in at 12.9 pounds, and that should kick you back down to a lower setting to keep everything safe. So initially while I was on the track, I thought I was hitting overboost. I thought that's why I was seeing the lower boost. Um, it turns out when I went and reviewed the tape, I was not hitting overboost, but rather was just not making the boost I wanted to in the low gears. Now I spoke with the tuner, um, I spoke with the manufacturer of the boost controller, I spoke with friends, and there's a couple different schools of thought here. It could be a mechanical issue, right? So I could have a boost leak somewhere, either in a vacuum line, you know, at the wastegate, that's a possibility. It could be faulty components, um, either the solenoid or the controller, something is incorrect. Um, it could be uh, damage to the wastegate itself. If there's something inside the wastegate, maybe the spring isn't sitting in there correctly. And remember, we have one solenoid, but we have two wastegates. So, you know, you could run a four port solenoid. You could have a better set up way to control boost than what I have. Like I said, I have a very basic um, setup. But what I did was I spoke with a few different people and we're actually gonna start first um, assuming there is not a mechanical issue. So I reached out to Go Fast Bits and this is what they told me to do. So they want two things. Go Fast Bits wants me to first show them all of the base settings. So they want me to go and click through all the settings and we'll kind of like throw that on the video so you can see what 
um, they're talking about, and then they want me to do a pull, um, probably in like third gear, with the boost controller turned all the way down. So the duty cycle, as low as it goes, is 10, and as high as it goes is 100. So we're gonna turn it down to 10, um, and we'll talk about why that's kind of unique here in a second, and then we'll go out and we'll do some pulls on the street to get a basic, like a baseline boost curve. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go out, um, I'm gonna adjust the boost controller down because one thing that I did find out was, um, I think this was a mistake when we were tuning on the dyno, basically preset one should just be wake, wastegate pressure, um, but what it actually is, is elevated a little bit. Um, so uh, we're gonna probably turn that down. All right, so now I'm really scratching my head because at the track, we were having the opposite problem, right? We were having low boosts and low gears. You just saw me do a pull in the street in third gear, and we made way more than wastegate pressure. So I'm super confused now. Let's go and run it in second gear and see what happens. At this point in the video, um, I had actually edited stuff further because I thought we were going to be adjusting the gain, the sensitivity on the controller. I really thought it was a controller issue, but after seeing the boost go up, I knew that there was something mechanically incorrect. So I drove home, I put the car on the lift, and I just started looking at my vacuum lines. At first glance, honestly, everything looked totally fine, but my eyes drew me to the driver's side wastegate, and let me show you what I found. Well. Uh, we found the problem. So first, I want to show you the passenger side and pay attention to the wastegate and the routing, right? The, the vacuum line routing is, is honestly, uh, there's tons of room. And I, I took a lot of care when I put this together to make everything ni nice and neat. What I didn't like, I'm going to hold this out of the way for a second, is on the driver's side, you've got one straight fitting. And if you look there closely, 190 degree, try and zoom in real close. 90 degree fitting right there. Now that's what they give you and they're trying to give you clearance. But what that does is two things. It kind of puts this hose in here at an angle like this. And because it's a street 90, it's very short. So basically what you get is, um, you get a situation where you're putting stress on this, there's heat on it and look what happened. Just broke the hose. So I don't know if it was rubbing on there. I don't know if it was heat, combination of the two. Either way, that is definitely not what you want. You can see some signs of excess heat right there. So um, we're gonna try and rotate the wastegate, but that likely is my problem. Um, I'm gonna check the rest of the system too, to be sure, but that's kind of scary because um, that's definitely where you, you don't wanna have you know, a leak like that. So we'll check the rest of the system, make sure it's set up correctly, and then come up with a better way to try and fix this. I think what I'm gonna try and do is clock this wastegate, get rid of that stupid 90, put a straight fitting on there, and see if I can get it pointed out to where I know it's not gonna hit the exhaust um, and rub up against anything. So I made a couple more uh, interesting observations. So when I first got this thing hooked up and I took it out on the street, I know it was functioning correctly. And I know that I had everything hooked up correctly. Clearly that line didn't break yet. And this thing was making right around 6.8 to 7.2, right around seven pounds of boost like it should on the street. When I got to the dyno, this is, things happen like this, right? When I got to the dyno, um, we did a couple baseline hits. The tuner started to try and turn up the boost controller and it wasn't reacting. We weren't getting more boost. And he said, hey, I think you probably got your lines flip-flopped. And I, you know, I didn't want to argue. I, I felt like I had it hooked up correctly, but hey, what do I know? You know, I was late. My wife was helping me at the time. I made some excuses, whatever, right? And we flip-flopped the lines. And then all of a sudden we were like kind of able to sort of get things to work. Um, anyways, turns out I went and rechecked everything. And we did, my wife and I did have these lines hooked up correctly the first time. 
Um, but because I had that leak on the bottom port, it was like the turbos were making boost, but the boost controller wasn't seeing it. And maybe, you know, I don't know. It just, it, it was one of these perfect storm things. So here's what I've done to correct this situation and what I'll recommend to you if you are doing this on your car. Um, so first, I double checked everything. I am sure now that it is hooked up correctly. I also sent my routing to the manufacturer um, and we'll let them chime in on it as well. I'm also gonna go back to the dyno and get this thing, not really retuned, but get the boost controller reset back up so that my set points now with something that doesn't leak are accurate. And lastly, I'm getting rid of that stupid Street 90. So I've got everything apart here on the bench. I took the whole wastegate apart. This guy is gonna go. You can see where it's got melted rubber on it. It's just not a good design. Um, the reason they don't give you a straight fitting is because it's gonna point it kind of towards the exhaust. And, and I think Hellion knows this. And it's just, you know, the rowdy on the passenger side is better. So what I'm doing is I'm buying some Dash 3 by 1 16th MPT fittings. I'm gonna run eight inches of steel braided hose just for that location. Now, realistically, you know, if money was no object and I could start all over again, maybe I'd run everything in braided hose, but I'm just gonna do it for this one because this is the one where I think I'm having the issue. And um, we're gonna hook it up that way, take it back to the dyno, get it all set back up. And then maybe uh, in the next video, we can play around with a gain in the sensitivity, but at least I'll feel a lot better knowing um, that everything is safe. So if you guys are doing this yourself and something doesn't look right, like when I set this up, I didn't like that fitting, but I ran with it. Don't do that, okay? You know, be smart, look at the kit. If you don't like exactly how it's routed and you're not sure, call the manufacturer or just try and make it better. And I think this is one of those cases. So you live and you learn, but we're getting it all set up correctly. Luckily, we didn't have an overboost scenario where it was too bad. We had good fuel in the tank, um, but this could have gone real bad uh, in a hurry. So anyways, that's my video, hope you like it. Next time, maybe we'll get it back on the dyno, get everything set back up. That'll be a separate video, but really appreciate you guys checking me out and watching me race. I love the comments, keep them coming. Don't forget to subscribe, it really helps me out as I am just kind of a small, small time guy doing this all myself. All right guys, see you next time on Truck and Roll.